came out from the Gut Bay, yes. the Japanese, Chinese restaurant, whatever it was. And now we're strolling around. Just wanted to show you one of the main squares. And okay, I'll go in a. Okay, let's let's turn. Salut, our square. So this is uh, this is where the Origo is located. It's a big shopping mall. It's been here for quite a few years. And just behind me, a train terminal. And the main Sorry. attraction of this square is the clock, the Riga clock. That's the main spot. Everyone comes here. And actually, up there on the last floor, they have a bar called the uh, Nao Bar. It's all like blue and stuff. Yeah. It's a little cafe that's open till late, like many other places in Riga. Just wanted to mention, most of the places in Riga are opened at least till 3 a.m. That's why a lot of tourists come here to have a good time and party because in North America, where everything closes at 2 a.m. and at 2.45, you need to be out of the spot. Obviously, it's a big change and people really dig the idea of a partying till 3 or 6 a.m. And now I'm gonna go and change some money. Okay. We were told not to film inside because it breaks some kind of policy that they have there and the guy was pretty aggressive about it. So we're gonna play by the rules and we left. And now we're going towards the Vats Riga, which is old Riga. And this is actually one of the uh, cool places. It's called Tea House. It's a place where you go to have tea, something sweet, um, it's really chilled. Now we'll continue and uh, we'll show you the old Riga when we get there. saw on those stalls that's the most thing that they sell everything from amber it could be magnets jewelry anything that they can possibly make out of amber they sell to tourists and it's definitely number one souvenir Riga's balsams it's one of those things that Latvia produces it's like a dark liqueur it's really, really bitter and it's usually suggested to be added to coffees. Riga 800. It was created when the Riga turned 800 years old, which was in 2001 because Riga was established in 1201. Just a cute little thing on a cobblestone to commemorate a big date for Latvia and Riga. Luba is wearing somewhat heels and she's struggling a big deal. I prepared myself because I didn't want to struggle, I just want to stroll around and enjoy myself while Luba is somewhere at the back trying to catch up <laughs> and we keep walking it's Sunday today the streets are pretty empty it's quite chilly my hands are frozen I should have taken the mittens or gloves or something overall the city is not as busy as I remember being it because a lot of people left to pursue better opportunities looking for better life 
for me coming from Canada streets seem really abandoned and empty and not too many cars on the streets traffic is not really traffic I'm used to way way worse but it's nice to walk in the uh, old city it's really quiet and really empty on this square one of the most popular buildings in Riga is located the building behind me is St. Peter's Church and you can go all the way up top that tower to take a look of the the view that it provides of the city I've been there a few times and it's pretty spectacular if you're in Riga for the first time you must go up and see the view St. Peter Church so they are opened oh we just missed it it's past six now oh well too bad but it's definitely closed on mondays for both summer and winter i'm standing in front of the house of the blackhead i'll show you the details on it it's quite interesting nighttime they light it up with different color lights and it looks really cool actually better than daytime Summertime, all these uh, all these small restaurants around the square open their patios. Ruby's taking a selfie, of course. Like that, like that, like that. <laughs> hot man, very very hot man. Slippers, no jacket, shorts. Great weather for that kind of outfit. And there I am complaining that I'm cold and I can't feel my hands. It's very interesting. If you get a chance to visit Old Riga and you feel hungry, try this place out. It's called Pilmeni. And Pilmeni is the kind of thing that all Russians eat. It's like a dumpling, just not a Chinese dumpling. The dough is different and it's a pretty cool spot. I've been there a few times. There it is, Lima store. If you like sweets, it's a must. I'll show you inside. Everything about chocolate. Candies, chocolate bars, literally anything you can imagine. Don't forget to visit Lima when you're in Riga. And also bring some with you for your friends and family to try. And now we're on the way to just crossing the street. Okay. Lime o'clock. It's it's a meeting spot. Luba is saying hi. And this is the monument of freedom. I think it's time to go home. Literally can't feel my hands. Luba is shaking, so we'll uh, we'll jump in a cab and go visit her mama. Okay. Bye. My sister Luba and I got to spend some quality time together. We had an incredible weekend, but it was time for her to go back to London. We said our goodbyes at the airport, already making plans to meet up, perhaps at some other part of the world next time. My stay in Riga was also coming to an end. My parents, brother and nephew came to the airport to see me off. I will miss them tremendously and hoping to come back again soon. On a positive side, I am very looking forward to finally seeing my plus one. In just 8 short hours, we will be reunited at last. Woohoo!